Hey guys, it's Vlad here from Words of Scale. <laughs> so this is not a typical video by any means, and uh, it's going to be a rant, highly unedited. <laughs> and if you don't like these types of videos, you can just uh, stop watching. But I wanted to address something. Uh, my channel is about AI and technology. And while I am one of those people who truly thinks that AI is an opportunity and not a danger or a threat to humankind, let alone to bloggers and SEO specialists, yet uh, time and time again I see concerns, so to speak, in the comment section and people asking me outright if SEO is going to die, if blogging is going to die, if articles are going to be... Uh, made obsolete and I ran a poll a few days ago asking two simple questions. Well, not so simple, but you know what I mean. The first one was about uh, do you think that ChatGPT is going to substitute the way we search information and make blogging obsolete? And the second one, whether you think AI is leveling up the field and everyone is capable of creating the same high quality content and in this video I would like to address both points. So to the first one, AI is undoubtedly going to change the way we search for, inf for information, it's going to change the way we buy things, but do not underestimate the importance of human touch, human expertise, relationships the sense of community, the sense of belonging, and just be honest with yourself. Ask yourself, like, what was the last time you bought anything of value through chat GBT alone? And on top of my head, I can list quite a few categories where I think ChatGPT is not going to substitute the way we search for things, the way we buy things. And I thought I had this list ready. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. So the first category is parenting. Uh, me being a parent of two little kids, I can tell you right now that no chat GPT is going to substitute human expert who has dealt with uh, many different kids, who has his opinion on different techniques. I will never allow a robot or AI who's been trained up to September 2021 <laughs> to tell me what to do with my kids. Never, ever. Not going to happen. I mean, if it was for some inexpensive goods, maybe I would ask about pros and cons, but not really, not really. Because every kid is, every child is unique and you need that expertise, you need that human uh, being to relate to. Then luxury goods. I know that there are some instances uh, where you can buy houses or and cars even through online, but this is quite rare. And the reason being is that you are spending a lot of money and you want, you want to get the experience of buying your car. And the experience of buying a luxury car or a house is offline it's not online it's not virtual you want to touch the car you want to actually visit the house you're going to buy you want to feel it you want to talk to the realtor or the broker or the car salesman you want to smell <laughs> the uh the air that is in the car you want to i don't know you you want that external very kinesthetic experience and uh I don't think there's ever going, going to be time. Well, not, no, don't say ever, but I don't think that in the near future we'll have people buying luxury goods online as a rule. The third niche is travel. I know we are all using Booking.com and this and that, but there's always going to be a place for travel agents and people who know you, who know your kids, you know, know your uh, dieting regimen, your, I don't know, allergies, your individual idiosyncrasies, what you like, what you don't like. And again, you want to preferably talk to a human being if it's something that you are visiting for the first time. You need to have that experience. 
And I'm not only talking about the you know the travel agents. I'm talking about your friends and relatives. I'm talking about the that one friend that you trust the most who has uh, traveled around the world a few times over. Then uh, medical. It's one of the fields when I know there is a, this whole telemedicine field that is growing, and I I appreciate the need for early diagnostics and early advice. Uh, in some instances, but still, when it comes to serious medical conditions, you would never go to ChatGPT and try to diagnose yourself. Finance. Uh, we like to read about finance, but reading about finance and or and spending your hard-earned money on something like uh, stocks, precious metals, or crypto, you need to have that uh, human advice, human connection, opinion. So what I'm trying to say is twofold. First, there is always going to be categories when human expertise is of extreme value. And think about it. If ChatGPT is trained on a data set, everybody is going to have, uh, is going to get uh, generic advice. And we all want to feel special. We all, we all want to be treated, uh, individually. And ChatGPT will never do that. At least not well, I'm saying never again, but uh, it's not going to be possible in a few years even. Unless you, you'll be able to, you know, download your whole life <laughs> and upload it to onto Playground. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Uh, AI it's, is not uh, at the stage where it knows you uh, as a person. And it might not be another 10, 20, 50 years until it does. And then we'll talk. So that's my first point. There's going to be categories that will bypass AI almost, prevail. The second one is, again, uh, there is a psychology of purchase, psychology of making buying decisions. And we want to be reassured. We want a constant affirmation whether we are doing the right thing. You will never get that affirmation <laughs> from a robot. Think about Amazon. Amazon had... Uh, a few years ago had disrupted the whole industry. It started out with books, now it's selling everything. But you know what? Uh, Amazon added uh, video reviews of uh, people reviewing the products. Why do you think they did that? Why? <laughs> now to the second point. Uh, AI is leveling up the field and everyone can produce or is capable of producing high value uh, articles. And I do agree, everybody is capable of producing high value content, but not everybody, everyone is going to. Like AI is a tool. Think of a hammer. <laughs> you give the hammer to 50 different people and they will do differently depending on their skill set, on their intentions, on their mood on the day. Uh, someone will use uh, a hammer to drive the nail and uh, another person will just, you know, <laughs> do some horrible things. The same with AI. Think about it this way. We have quite a few AI copywriting tools. And almost every one of those is based on either GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. But the outputs are very different. And the difference between the uh, those tools is in prompt engineering. Take ZimWriter, for example. Matt from ZimWriter has spent, I don't know how many hours perfecting his uh, prompts that are being used as an uh, intermediary bet uh, between the algorithm and the output. And the same with people. ChatGPT is easily accessible now. Uh, but some people write me and tell me uh, your prompts don't work. And some people praise me because they've tried a few prompts. They've uh, failed. So they've tried again. They've succeeded. And moreover, and what is even more important, they've come up with their own prompts based on what I'm showing to you. Uh, and I haven't even touched on what is possible with ChatGPT with your regular articles. Like my website, I, I don't like to brag, I, I hate it. But my website, which is trickmino.ai, one of my websites, I've just gotten uh, 800 organic search clicks uh, in, uh, in a month. And this is fresh domain. And my stuff is ranking. You know why? <laughs> because I've written some of it with AI, but I have tables, I have key takeaways, I have data. 
I have uh, a lot of analysis that is going into the article. And unless you ask ChatGPT directly to analyze something, it won't produce such level of research. And will never, it, it is not capable of doing that by default as of now. You can create beautiful tables, you can create infographics, you can do research, but you choose to just generate a, an article, get a 500 piece of <laughs> and then complain that it is uh, what everybody else is doing. So the difference between you and the other person next to you is in prompt engineering, is in using your brain, is in allowing other users to see the information from different angles and sides because you are in control. It is not AI who is controlling your outputs. Well, it is, but to an extent. You should be always in control. You should have, always have the end goal in mind. What do you want to achieve? So AI is a blessing, maybe in disguise, but AI is opening up so many opportunities. It creates more opportunities than it's does damage. Of course, there is a morality of using AI. There is this whole notion of plagiarism. But again, this is inevitable. And it is up to you to use AI to get ahead, not to be buried under, you know, the, a huge pile of generic content. So I'm, <laughs> I don't think this video will do well at all. But I just wanted to take it off my chest, basically tell you what I feel. And I will continue to produce the content that I feel is educational, that brings value. First and foremost, I want you to exercise the one thing that matters the most in this niche. It's your brain, it's your gray matter. And AI is like a tablet that, that can uh, supersize you, that can speed up your thinking process, that can allow you to avoid procrastination, present you with different opportunities. And uh, I am not a native speaker, so I have no idea uh, how much of what I'm saying is going to be understood, but I had to make this video. And this is it, guys. <laughs> like, share, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.